the order meeting now. Oh, thanks, Guilford. I just started it. Sorry. Now we're recorded. Um, I don't have my regular. Computer. Yeah, I have it. Hold on. Words. So I, I keep it up on the. Here, language for remote meetings. Um. All right, it says pursuant to the chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 extended by chapter 22, the acts of 2022, this meeting shall be conducted via remote main to members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by phone and no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time. So we and we have nobody waiting, I don't think. All right. So we should say that um, so this <coughs> meeting is called to order and, as a TAC. And we have um Guilford, Mooring, Kim Tremblay, Joe Fatoruso, Tracy Zafian, and Stefan Sajek are in attendance, and that is for Amber particularly. Yes. Um, and so this meeting is called to order and we now are um, in the public comment period but since we have no public joining us at the moment um yep. we'll go over that uh we'll go to the next agenda item which is updates on um safe routes to school oh sure um okay so i didn't know if chris lindstrom will be here and maybe I'll, well, we just got an email from her what'd she say and she said she has a zba so meeting so she'll she'll she's gonna miss that oh i see for her like um for her rental property i think yeah <clears throat> all right okay so so we go so um So in terms of safe routes to school, so um, Chris and I, Chris Lindstrom and I had a great meeting last week with Deb Westmoreland and Tony, I mean, Tori Halloran, who is the safe routes to school coordinator for the four Western Mass counties. And we are planning to have, we we're talking about all the different things with safe routes to school, and we are planning to do, participate in the districts back to school event that they have the day before school starts which is school is starting this year on august 30th so that event will be on august 29th it's scheduled i think for 5 30 or no maybe it's five and we'll be tabling there um no it's at five five to six thirty and um i had reached out to to mass bikes and they offered to provide lights Oh, cool. And um, and some information about that acts to reduce traffic fatalities. Um, and we <laughs> and we're just going to try to kick it off. And also, um, you know, for more people who are interested, get more people to like sign our sign in sheet and say they want to be on the mailing list. So what uh, Chris did recently is she reached out to anybody who had signed. So the district did a survey at the end of the 2022 school year, um, the 2021, 2022 school year in the spring when we were doing those uh, walk audits of all the elementary schools. And then um, they also, we also collected people's contact info at the table and event that we had at the back to school event last August. So we have quite a few, I think we have like 60 or 70 parents and some staff who've signed up and said they're interested in finding out more. They haven't necessarily committed to volunteer, but it's a start. Um, one thing too, we talked with the district, one thing that Safe Reach the School is interested in, and maybe at a future meeting, we can invite Tori Halloran back. So she took over from the person who used to help us, Lucy. Um, is that they really are encouraging um, schools to implement like some curriculum and training, particularly at the second to third grade level, where mm -hmm. what they tend to do is they'll go in and they'll meet with each of the, you know, second or third grade classes 
and they'll do some hands-on things. Um, and so they are, what they'll do is they'll go in for the first time and then they are also trying to train trainers um, at the school districts so that they can do it sustainably like year after year and things. And um, Deb was interested in that, you know, in terms of the professional development. And mm. so we're going to try to make that happen possibly on one of the other, prof one of the professional development days that's already set up or that the PE teachers or who's ever interested could go out, go do the training and then do it in their classes. Um, so it's all in the formative stages, but we are, we're excited to be getting something off the ground with that. So, and I think, and we talked to, I mean, I know that Mass Bike is interested in promoting safe routes to school. And then also when we had the person come from ECAC, they were interested too. So that might be a good opportunity to loop back in and connect with them. Okay, so that's all I have. Any questions or anything? And I know Eve, Eve Vogel wasn't sure if she could join tonight, but she's also planning to do an event at the beginning of the school year at UMass to promote school, um, alternative modes of transportation and work with Mass Bike on that too. So. Yeah, I, I guess, I think it, I think this is a really great idea because, you know, I am a lifelong cyclist, right? And I mean, I don't know how I turned out that way other than we didn't have public transportation and it was a good way of getting around. But I also do remember very vividly, and maybe you all have similar experiences and I, I would love to hear this, but, you know, things like like not bike radio rodeos, but like in, we had a rec service thing where, um, you know, summer, summer, um, it was through like LSSE kind of thing where in summer camp, we would have like learn how to ride our bike and do all kinds of things and use hand signals. And I mean, this is when I was little, but it really was, it made me feel like I could do that, you know, like it really sure. changed my mindset that way. So I, I, I don't know if, again, it was just me, but but that that kind of stuff certainly impacted my ability to feel like I could use my bike safely. Anyway, so I think it's really great. That no, yeah, definitely. I and I mean, you, Kim, you had drawn the analogy before about like the fire safety program, and this is a right. lot smaller. Like the fire safety is what they do it like every week for like a month, and then they have like the you know, big, you know, graduation ceremony, they all have certificates and everything. So this is more designed just to be, you know, like a one day thing, but it could be something that's followed up too. But that and I think like, it's still really yeah. powerful. I mean, I, I don't remember participating in any kind of bike rodeos as a kid, but I know I've helped with them and kids always get a lot out of them. I know sometimes the Amherst Police Department has done bike rodeos. And a Crocker Farm, they used to do them at the after school program. Yeah. They'd have a day yeah, and they do it with like, and Morris Hill would provide the bikes. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities there yeah. to promote it. I think it's really great. I mean, especially if it's something that happens in gym class or happens, you know, at a certain time and everyone's getting that, right? The same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's another day that, mm -hmm. so one thing that the Safe Routes to School program they promote is that they, um, they have these uh, periodic days that they declare as like, you know, bike, walk, roll to school days. Right. And they are having one in October, October 4th. Um, so one thing we're going to see is if, I mean, last year when we did the kickoff at back to school, we said we're definitely going to have some big like event for Amherst then. And we're not sure that we're going to have volunteers for that. And I mean, Kim has a middle, I mean, uh, Chris has a middle school student. I have high school student. So we really do need parents at the elementary school to say they want to oversee something like that. But I personally have been thinking that it would be nice to do something, for example, like at Crocker and take advantage of that new fancy roundabout at Pomeroy Village and so on. And <laughs> I, was say, I frequent a lot of the, the parents groups, you know, yeah. local libraries and I don't know, as someone who's currently looking like, what do I do? Because I used to bike a lot as a kid, but how do you bike with like a kid on your yeah, seat? Yeah, okay. <laughs> and different options. It'd be interesting to do it like the different libraries around here. I mean, they're pretty well 
well peopled. Yeah. So what were you thinking of, Joe? What would you, what kind of event would you be interested in? It's something that uh, introduces parents to like children. Oh, and sure. And safety. And just maybe, maybe the local bike shops would be interested in, in selling, you know, all the accoutrement. Right. Which they do. Yeah. I mean, they could come to the events. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's a great idea. So Jess Lavin, who is an outreach coordinator for Mass Bikes, and I was in communication with her about the Safe Routes to School event, but that's an interesting, that could be an interesting thing that they could do too, you know, to promote it, to provide information, you know, maybe have a webinar someday. I mean, they have some great webinars or something, but even just to, or even just when they're doing events to have like demos, um of it so there's all kinds of really cool especially from europe there's all kinds of different ways of carrying your kids around so <laughs> it does not have to be like a bike trailer or, so oh yeah there's or um, even one of those old school you know behind the seat like the bicyclist seat like yeah those old school plastic seat things <laughs> But yeah, there's a bunch where they have them they now, like, with, them, um, like, do we go down and the kid goes down too? Or, <laughs> well, right. I mean, that's a great thing about a bike trailer and the trailers. Um, I mean, my kid used to sleep all the time, and then you also have the tag alongs, you know, that's nice too. So, if your kid lean, you know, it, it can get a little crazy, but it'd be nice to have one that's like very family oriented. So, I'll, I'll definitely mention that to her. Well, thank you. That's going to sell it to my wife. Oh, we could bike and she'll fall asleep. Oh, and she, no, the trailers are huge. They fall asleep all the time. That. Yeah, that's helpful. So, um, yeah, cool. All right. So then. Um, streetlight policy is the next. So the streetlight policy, um, maybe Guilford knows more than I do. Um, so the council sponsors, uh, Councilor Henneke and Devin Gothier had been revising the policy and they were planning to present an updated version at the last council meeting um at the end of june but then there were too many other items on the agenda and there were also some comments and so they pushed it back and and i did give them some comments i know eve vogel provided some extensive comments um they got some from other counselors too so i think they are working on revising it again so a question for us would just be, um, you know, whether whether something comes back to us to review again or not, which it may. I mean, I think one of the key points that both Eve and I were making is that um, that the focus of the streetlights policy, the the one that was proposed, was really focused a lot on dark skies, and that some of the consideration of transportation safety was sort of secondary and that some of the ways that they're proposing it could had could have adverse impacts on yeah. transportation safety particularly for vulnerable populations and in my mind that even includes older drivers i mean i tend to cite statistics about pedestrians because they're the ones you know who are the most vulnerable um but also a lot more car drivers are also killed in I mean are killed in, a lot more of the or relatively more crashes where drivers are killed happen at night too and it's just some of it's related to lighting some it's related to fatigue but lighting is definitely a good countermeasure as is controlling speeds so um we'll see if it comes back to us I would encourage them to do that so I believe it's going to be back up probably on the council agenda in August so so i mean would we wouldn't get it before that we wouldn't get it well i guess yeah i mean we'll have to see when our next meeting is um and maybe too it can get pushed to september i think the council is meeting once or twice in august oh. and then they'll have their september meetings um but it, i think it can be challenging though when changes are made you know after they get feedback they make changes but then I've noticed just like the way some of it works, like the next item was about this, you know, snow and ice removal is that like that went through um, a committee before it went to the council, like until every like every little piece of it had been reviewed 
and everybody had agreed on the language. And then when it went to the council, the council just voted to approve it. Whereas if in response to comments, the sponsors are continuing to make changes and those changes aren't vetted before it goes to the full council, right. then it gets to the full council and some of the counselors say, but wait a minute, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, they're seeing the changes like for the first time or whatever. And so it can be more, it can be harder to get it approved. I mean, um, Eve suggested some major changes. I, assuming that they were going to take a vote at the last meeting, just suggested more minor word changes. To the snow and ice proposal. No, no, no. On the streetlights. Oh, on yeah, the streetlights, yeah, yeah. I suggested. Like, for example, there was language with the dimming of the lights, and it said, you know, the lights shall be dimmed no later than 11 p.m., for example. And, you know, and they shall be dimmed to no more than 70% of a of regular illuminance and i said well if you have those clauses in there it could actually be dimmed much earlier and it could also be dimmed much more right they're saying the maximum will be 70 percent. it could be like 70 percent, or 60 percent, or 50 percent, or 30 percent. we don't really know and also we don't even have the capacity right now to to do that in anyway. the current lights so I guess just, you know, in the name of safety and the fact that by the time we have those lights, you know, the technology will improve, there'll be more research and so on. I guess my tendency is to err on the side of caution and it can be revised. But I don't know, Guilford, I mean, if the town is going to replace the streetlights, what, what do you see as a time frame for that? I'm not doing it. So it's you won't it's gonna, be here then. <laughs> I won't be here. So it'll be, you know, five okay. years out probably. More. Five years or more, right? So yeah. Okay. And what why is the um the snow and ice policy on our so it was just on the agenda just because it finally went through okay. like the changes that had been proposed. So the changes that were implemented were the main changes were to one to put the responsibility for enforcement of snow and ice under under the um, inspection services and not under the police department. Um, and a number of people had lobbied for it to go under DPW as well, but I think. The decision was made to put it under inspection in part because i think inspection also deals with property owners on a lot of other enforcement yeah. type issues mm -hmm. um and then the second part of that is also that now there's a section about when bushes are oh right for hanging the sidewalk which mm -hmm. is something that the dpw has always sent out letters when they get complaints but this just formalizes it and it's in the bylaw so it used to be in the bylaws and someone took it out. So I don't know how it so, got removed. Anyway, so that's good. But it actually got approved because no one's told us. Well, I haven't seen that. It got approved. I saw that it did get approved. I mean, I it got approved it. like 10 to zero from yeah. the counselors who were present and they didn't have any discussion over it. Yeah. But I don't believe there's a new updated bylaw on the website yet because... I was going to send that information to some people and there wasn't anything to send. So, okay. so anyway, does that mean that Guilford, will you still get those? I mean, if, inf if enforcement is under inspection, well, I mean, we're not going to, we'll send everything to inspections, but they're not the ones you're going to like cut back the trees or anything, right? They're, they're the um, ones who are going to handle it. We're not going to, okay. uh, we won't coordinate anything with the property owners and we'll just wait um, for someone to say there's a, we need to do something and we'll do all it. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Got it. If that's truly the way it went. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. I think it went that way. Weren't well, you on like vacation? I, you were on vacation. Like I said, no one has sent us a letter saying, or any okay. kind of follow through is weak sometimes. So we don't know what's, there's no follow through that we're doing. Oh, all right. Or that was even passed. I'm pretty sure it passed. Yeah, I think it did. Well, and so what Kim is saying, like I read in the paper that it passed, so I believe it passed. Um. So the next, the next agenda item is um, e-bikes. Uh, oh yeah. So just one more thing with that, um, with the obstruction of the public way. So I mean, it is a parental issue, 
about like snow and ice, but then also, I mean, I know I was walking around last night and there are some places that have a lot of bushes and things, tree branches well, and yeah. stuff hanging like pretty far over the sidewalk or even like at head level and things. Um, and so I was talking recently with the chair of the town services and outreach committee about maybe doing public information and like outreach and just letting people know that that's the rule and I don't know, maybe they're, you know, maybe the town's public information person could do a little blurb about it or something just to like get the word out. Because I'm pretty sure that some people don't know. I mean, I've even had long term residents tell me that they didn't think that they were responsible for shoveling their sidewalk. And, and definitely people, not everybody knows about the bushes either. Yeah. So. So I don't know if that's something we want to be involved with, with enforcement. Um, I mean, with, uh, you know, with education about it. So the e-bikes in Massachusetts, um, I meant to send around the handout and it was just basically, you know, that, um, Jess Slavin from Mass Bikes had provided me information on the act to reduce traffic fatalities. And she also sent along something about the e-bikes because questions come up, come up about those and how they're considered under state law. So. Um, I, can, I can send I can send that around and there's also been questions too about like e-bikes that are pretty powerful and can go pretty fast and should they be should they be on the um you know should they be on the streets and so on yeah so, um I mean should they be on the you know the bike paths and things and I think it's a legitimate issue I mean I've been noticing this too Honestly. I mean, do you ever, do you not, do you ever feel like not safe with it or? Um, no, mostly more as a pedestrian than, you know, with e-bikes on and, and other motorized um, things on, on the sidewalks mostly because <sighs> right, they so. do kind of come up on you pretty quickly and I don't know. I, you're not always given warning. Where does no, it fall no. legally on a bike path? Like, it's not motorized, right? So what's or that? Is it, like, is it is it like what rules govern the bike path? And I mean, is there a speed limit? I don't think there's a restriction about um, motorized or not motorized. There, there actually is. Yeah, uh, there is. Okay. There's three classes of e-bikes: one, two, and three. Yeah, and then I can't remember which is the best, um, but really, I think like it's class two. The middle one is the only one, one and two or three and two are the only ones that are allowed supposedly on bike paths. The other one is fast enough that it should stay in the road and they're supposed to stay in the road. So it, it depends on the power and the which class it falls into. Same and I mean, National, go ahead. Well, the National Park has the same classification system. They, they use that. It's a national system. Well, so, um, yeah, I mean, I'm pulling up now that there's there's this um, class one, two, and three that Mass Bike had done a, like, handout about it. Um, but now, I mean, so a lot of the bike path, like, some of the bike paths, like, the rail trails are under the jurisdiction of DCR, but they're not really, I mean, always usually out, like, enforcing and saying, wait, you're, you have an e-bike, you're going too fast, or you're... Well, I don't think I don't think there's a speed actually um, restriction because you know you can go pretty fast on your own bicycle too. No, that's true. I don't I think know. there is a speed restriction on the bike path, honestly. Honestly, the only problems I've ever seen with e-bikes, and just because this is huge in in Brooklyn, which might be a different environment, is just the delivery. Uh, you know, there's actually been a few deaths in the city recently, and so it's been a big issue. Um, but Deaths yeah, of e bicyclists for me, bicyclists, yeah, if you're doing commerce, you tend to drive a little unsafely, as do like delivery drivers. Hmm. Yeah, but then I've seen people use like scooters a lot and things too. It can be a little crazy, particularly as you're saying, like in an urban environment. I mean, Amherst doesn't have that many scooters yet, yeah, thank god, but people don't hmm. necessarily follow like all the traffic rules. We're getting there. We're getting there with the with the scooters. You mean? Yeah, there's a lot more when the students are here. 
Yeah, but I, I oh, think for sure. it's more confined to campus. I don't know. I haven't seen that many downtown, but maybe I'm wrong. Well, we got a group that come up from the south side of town and go by us every, every oh. you know, they just shoot up the side of 116 South Pleasant Street there and they're like passing and going up to campus. Don't, we don't know where they go. We don't. But, but the huh. thing I always get concerned about is a lot of, and even my kids sometimes, you know, in urban areas are like, ooh, can we rent a bike? Ooh, can we rent a scooter? And they never have helmets. And right. No, it just this seems is terrible. Problem. So when I was traveling overseas, I was in Australia and every, um, all the stations where you could rent um, e-bikes or scooters or whatever, they all had helmets attached to them. Like it was like a law. This and is, I, I thought that was a pretty good idea, but then people said, ew, that's disgusting or whatever. But it, I mean, at the same time, it's like that is providing one. I I mean, I didn't vote for the for the the e-bikes in town at this committee because of the lack of of helmets. I think it's a really bad idea, especially a lot of people don't even don't usually ride bikes and now they're riding powered bikes that go even faster without a helmet. The only good thing about all the e-bikes, right, is they all have lights on them. Except for the Valley bikes, they don't have very good lights sometimes. Like I think they have regenerative braking the, to provide lights or they're supposed to recharge in yeah. the stations, but a lot of them are dark. And again, they're not riding, they don't have helmets and they're they don't in the street helmets. and they're in the street. And they're not really properly fit on their bicycles either. I think it's, it's a, I don't know. It's not yeah but anyway and as you said they're not experienced so right. i mean i do hope that we will get valley bikes back or some yeah i know assessor but um but there should be more with safety maybe we can talk to mass bikes about that when they come um yeah so mass bikes was interested in coming and then the only other thing i had was just about um just about the regional transportation plan update um so in the agenda I sent out, they, um, you know, they are accepting comments for a couple, for another week. And, um, you know, it's good. I like looking not only at like what we're doing, but then also what the region is doing. Mm -hmm. And so um, it seemed like a good chance to kind of reflect on that. And um, that's why I put it on the agenda. Great. And they had information meetings. They had one yesterday and then they have another one. So, uh, and I've also been impressed too when I've gone back and looked at our town plans. You know, we have the transportation plan, we have the bike and pedestrian networks plan, and things like we have some good things, and uh, quite a bit of it is being implemented already. So we mm -hmm. are making progress. It's nice. I mean, for maybe maybe we could do that at a future meeting, but for some of the newer committee members to just think about that. Um, I mean, we have these documents and it may not always seem like we're making progress, but we are. Totally. So. Um, and I'm assuming we don't have any referrals. And no, we don't have any. I mean, yeah, the council hasn't been meeting that much and um, things. That, and one thing that um, the TSO chair talked to me about a little is if they put an item on their agenda either for every meeting or every other meeting about having um something you know like like an update from TAC or something just so that we're in the loop with them and telling them what we're doing and seeing how we can help their work and things like that so mm -hmm. I thought that was a good idea um I mean, it's been a long time since we got a formal referral from the council or from TSO. Yeah, it has. So, okay. And so, I don't know, that's about it. <laughs> so we have some, like uh, short meet, some um, uh, meeting it, minutes, yeah. which I think would be really useful to get done at this And meeting. Amber would love that. I'm yes. Sure. So um, yeah, let me, let me pull those up. But let's see. Oh, yeah. Stefan and Joe weren't at the March 23rd meeting. So I don't know if we. Maybe we can wait. Maybe we wait. Yeah. We want to wait. We can wait. 
Yeah, we might have to wait till we have more members to approve these minutes, I think. Sure. Um, yes. Was right because we were going to want at least like four of us, right? Yeah. And yeah, so. Okay. All right. All right. Um, and so do we want to um I, I would like to set a meeting for yeah. um hey the roundabout the new roundabout's great love it Gone oh through. the one in south amherst yes I have love you it. have you been biking through there no i have not i've only yes no i have not i've only um been in my car past there but i love it I'll, i don't like that the middle is all um asphalt though yeah the middle is um the island in the center is a little small because of the trucks making left turns oh right i was wondering about that yeah that's what i thought okay oh so that the trucks can go on the apron is that the yeah. idea yes yeah, so the trucks track in the apron and they don't track over the island like the umass one the trucks track over the island Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, the grass, the island is too big in the middle. It needs to be oh. shrunk down a little bit because the trucks track across it. Oh. Um, this one, I shrank down the island. I shrank it down probably a little too much. <laughs> yeah, it is really, yeah, it is small, but it's, it, it's, but it's still nice. Worked. I mean, I think, were, and, and you're still putting in like some signage, right? And, mm -hmm. and lights and whatever, whatever. I like that it really slows traffic down too. I mean, you could still navigate quick, you know, you can navigate easily through it, but it definitely, you can't just go straight through it, right? You really have to slow down. I like it. I like that fact. Yeah. This is, this is our fifth one. And this is our first one that's totally done by in-house. Oh, really? Cool. Yep. Oh, that's nice. We had some people check us after we did it. but um, What do you mean check you? Just kind of a, like peer review. Oh, okay, okay. Nice. We pretty, we pretty much did this one in house. So now, have you heard many comments about it yet, Guilford? Or um, well, only one negative comment. And she she hates all roundabouts, and she pretty much is now have has her path restricted to where she can go in the world because <laughs> she can't go to Northampton anymore without going to Sunderland first. Oh, right. Um, so, uh, but everyone has pretty much been in favor. Has been really supportive. The, okay. the, inter the interesting thing was, was that it still had the traffic lights up, but the roundabout shape was there. People actually followed the roundabout shape, even though they could drive straight across it. Oh, oh nice. Because it was filled in with gravel. You could drive mm. straight across, but people stayed on the pavement and went around the shape and knew what the, knew how to handle it. It was kind of interesting to watch that. Oh, I that guess is interesting. I went through, the last time I went through was on Monday and, um, I, it is a little confusing if I didn't, but I, I think it's just because, because it's not quite finished yet. You know, like the paint isn't up and, the and signs be, aren't. because it's all kind of black, right? There's, I, I think if the middle, I, I, that's why I wish the middle were something maybe different. I'm, I'm just telling you. Well, it's going to be green. Thoughts. Oh, it is. Okay, great. That, cause that it, it's just like, it's hard because it's new you know, hard a little bit to like see what's there. And it was, it's also dusk, you know, so it's not the greatest light either. Uh, yeah. Usually we paint those red, like the red brick we have at yes, the, uh, right. Triangle Street. Right. So we decided this one's going to be green in the middle. So that yeah. texture in the middle will be green. That's great. Oh, that so it's just, it's just going to be the pavement painted green, like no vegetation or anything, right? Right. So. right. The, the truck apron will all be this green color instead of a oh, red okay. brick pattern. And then yeah, the green, green island in the middle, we haven't decided what to put there. Um, we're still trying to find a place to put a Lord Jeffrey Amherst statue, but maybe that's not the right place. Um, <laughs> I really... Where it, did the Jeffrey Amherst statue come from? <laughs> it's a long running joke. Oh, yeah, yeah I'm sure. Somebody um, would run it over. Yeah. So. But I like all the improvements to all the sidewalk. I mean, it's just so much, it's so nice. It really changes like, like the one, like the sidewalks in the new sidewalks in town that go past the, the, the um, post office, whatever. 
it just changes the whole like feel of that street, whatever that little street is downtown. Kellogg Street. Yeah, it really is so much, just makes it so much nicer and, and accessible. And I imagine for all the older people, especially who live in that house, I mean, it just makes life easier to get around, you know, with sidewalks that are completely accessible well, in, in north amherst ah. right you're done in north amherst that section that, that section's good. done yes so that that's the good. section just south of pine street mm -hmm. Tim, you know so you know how there was that secondary road and like they filled it in with grass and you know it looks oh, nice yeah. yeah 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 no it's really it's really great I, it I'm very excited. Well, not like when, when is this stuff going to happen? Like Cross walks. What? What yeah. about at the park, Rock Park? When all, is that going to happen or not? The, you, mean, you mean Kendrick Park? Kendrick Park. Sorry, yeah, sorry. Sorry, because that looks good. Graff Park looks great too. All those oh. sidewalks are awesome. You mean North Pleasant Street next to Graff Park? Ken, yeah. No, I mean, I mean, Ken. I'm talking now. Kendrick Park. Sorry. Kendrick, Kendrick Park, Park. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Sorry. North Pleasant Street there. Yeah. It'll probably go out hopefully by the end of this month and cool. a contract will probably be ready in August and it'll go into August and probably into next year. So oh. do you think will any of that work start this year or it will start next year? I don't know. And we'll um see. and what's the time frame? Do you know what the time frame is with Mass DOT on Route 9? Yeah. Northampton Road. They were supposed to be done in August, but I don't think they will be. No. Oh, oh I thought they were going to 2024 personally, but. Uh, there's some issues right now that have to be worked out. Some of it's looking really good and they upgraded the Hadley section too. That looks nice. Like with the yeah, least, like the be, pavement markings and things like it, that. It'll be smooth from the center center of Amherst to the North, to the Route 9, Route 91. It could be centered, so it'll be smooth all the way. Yeah, uh, no, really not quite. <laughs> 91, yeah. Doesn't it just go from, I mean, the Hadley project, right? It goes from the mall, it goes from Maple to the center of Hadley. Isn't that right? Yeah. Well, I mean, when Baltazar is done with their section and Caracas is done with their section, it'll be really smooth, basically from the center of Amherst to 91. Yeah, that's okay. Great. The question, those raised manholes. Mm. Are they going to stay there, or is that? Do they? Do I, I don't there? think they're actually raised. I think it's just that they haven't they filled just in. Yeah. No, they're raised. Oh, now, that's final grade. So that's where the level of pavement will be. So there's another course of pavement that goes on there, which that's is supposed to be like. done by August, but I'm not sure it'll make it because the side there's some sidewalk issues. Oh, really? Oh, but they've been doing a lot of the work with the sidewalk on the Northampton Road section on both sides. They have and people been. are using that. I mean, for the last couple of months, even though it's just been dirt and people have been using it. So yes. it shows that there's like demand for it and things. So no, that's good. Um, oh, and and I had a question. So is there is that you did say that there's the rectangular rapid flashing beacons that are going in? There's Sometimes, a few that yes. are going in around town. They're on, they're on the list to go in. Okay. Do where are those gonna be? They're in the center of town mostly. Okay. There's there's one by Kendrick Park. There's one on one set on Prey and Triangle. There's another set on Triangle and Churchill. Or tri yeah, Triangle and Churchill. What's the there? street that goes down to um, Lessie? No, is that? Yeah, that's that. Interesting. It's on Triangle where it's either Lessie or Churchill comes out there. It's um, Lessie, I think. And um, oh, that's good. There's three. That's four. That's Is there one going on Amity? Um, I think there is. I feel like there's some new signage. Is there any new signage going up, or is there just signs that I haven't seen before, <laughs> like that I there, haven't noticed? There's some new signs that are popping up, um, but nothing in the center of town. Okay. There's some wayfinding signs. Planning's got their wayfinding sign thing done. Oh so right, yeah. There's new wayfinding signs going in. Um. Okay. No, that's great. Yeah. That'd be great to have some more. I mean, I, I feel like all these improvements are just going to, you know, help people to bike and walk a lot more. I mean, you know, it just makes it easier for everyone to be able to do that. 
And I, and I especially feel, I mean, even walking around downtown at night, like where there are dark sections, like along triangle or things like that. I mean, in the mid crosswalks, it's pretty unlikely that somebody will stop. Yeah. For me, unless, um, unless like, I'm like, there's flashing lights, <laughs> it feels like that. And so, I mean, it's not necessarily, somebody said, well, that's true. That's a dangerous situation. You need to have some other treatment, but I think it's just that it's just a lot easier as a pedestrian to walk around downtown. If I know, like if I hit the lights and then somebody will stop and things, and I feel pretty confident that the drivers will stop on these two lane roads. I would feel less confident on like a big four lane, five lane road or something, but. So planning has money to do the new downtown redesign. So right now you can't do any rapid rectangular flashing beacons at the cross block ones because they're all hidden behind parked cars mostly. So. Oh yeah. That's why we haven't put those in. That's now there's one like, like we had reviewed it too, right? Planning. There was the one at Garcia's for example, right? That one's going in. Yeah. Oh. Because there's no there's no parking, right? There's no parking on one side. So on the park side, right? But the other side, and yeah. No, that's an issue too. Huh. Cool. All right. good. Oh, and so there's one more update, Kim, that I saw is on the council agenda, and Guilford said he will be there. But um, the town manager is bringing. Uh, he has an item about seeing if the council will support exploring TAC becoming the Transportation Commission. Oh. So, and to Joe too, but, oh, and cool. Stefan. So that basically, I mean, if, if that was to happen, then it would, it would turn it into like a, more of a decision-making body and not just an advisory committee that can have additional support. So I think the idea is to go to the council and see how the council feels about that or see what types of things that the council would want to give that authority to the yeah, commission right. if it's created. Mm -hmm. And then uh, based on the feedback that the town manager gets, he would go forward with um, creating a charge for the commission. Wow, cool. When is that? Is that on an agenda? It's on the agenda for um, Monday, I believe. Oh, huh. Gilford, oh, we can't hear you. We all have to learn how to read lips, and this, these things will go much better. <laughs> um, the, uh, it goes it goes to Monday to council, and if council approves, it'll get sent to GLO. What's that? Government. Something. Organization legislation. Oh. They're usually yeah, the ones that do, like, they do the ward, ward smithing about um, the bylaws and things. Like the, the snow and ice went to them, for example. They get everything. Huh. So anyway, anyway. Well, good. So Stefan, anything to add? <laughs> uh, no, I do live near that roundabout though. And I just drove through it um, right for this meeting. And um, I like it. I mean, I, that light was kind of ridiculously long. And I feel like it was it was on some kind of weird timer if it was. So, like I've, I've sat there at 1 p.m. or sorry, 1 a.m. sitting there and uh, sometimes I run it, uh, but uh, uh, if it's if it's late at night and there's, you know, but no, it's, I think it's a big improvement. I do think like, um, not to uh, be nitpicky, but also to be nitpicky, I think coming out of it, is, it's a, a little bit of like, a, I guess it's the whole purpose to slow cars down, right? I mean, yeah. to maintain right. safety. So right. I do, I'm like, oh man, I'm going slower than I want to when I'm coming out of it. It's, it's kind of a sharp exit, but again, that's probably better than the alternative. So yeah. Um, I do like that though. And then with respect to e-bikes, I mean, I, you talked about it earlier, but um, I, I do see them on the bike path. I walk my dogs sometime there. And um, I think people, at least to me, have been pretty respectful and do say on your left, on your right, whatever. That's great. Um, yeah, and I don't ever feel unsafe. I can see because how that, you know, some people might have concerns because they are heavy. They're like at least, you know, what, 45, 50 pounds. And they move like, you know, upwards of, I think that, I think this can, there's a, some limit where they can't exceed something like 23 or 25 miles an hour. Um, even if the motor can support it, it's, it's kind of like for safety, all companies kind of cap it at that speed. So, but even then, if you hit someone, so what Joseph was saying earlier about people getting unfortunately fatally injured or whatever in Brooklyn, I mean, we don't have that type of kind of population here, that level, but I have heard of people, even on regular bikes on the UMass campus getting struck by a regular bicyclist during class change. And then the scooters, I mean, like Guilford said, they kind of, I mean, 
there's a million of them when school's in session around campus and um so i could see that being an issue but i don't i mean i don't know what the town is trying to do about making sure they're not you know on the sidewalk especially in high population areas like going past antonio's downtown amherst you know that's a narrow area and i think you're not really supposed to ride them regardless um, scooters right. too but so yeah i mean nothing's supposed to be on the sidewalk but then i just get worried i mean again and some of it is my kids when they've rented them that they want to just be off in the road and they don't have helmets and right uh, <laughs> it never seems like totally safe and yeah, also, I can little... see around. I can also see around campus. I mean, if you're talking about twenty to twenty-five miles an hour, like on the bikes, but as Kim said, some you know higher-speed bicyclists can go that fast too. So, right, the rail trails really aren't the best place for high-speed bicyclists either. No, no, it's recreation, so, right? Yeah. So, um, but I do have a question for you, Savan, about the um, mm -hmm. about with the lighting. Is so one of the things that had come up with the streetlights policy is the idea about you know having streetlights at bus stops or mm -hmm. um and that in the end right that they didn't keep that in but i think there it was it was decided that um and i and i was one of the people who said well maybe we don't actually need to have streetlights at bus stops because one we have lots of bus stops where they're not being used at night right but also that you want to have some type of lighting at bus stops right like even if it's not street lighting and so and I know I was speaking with somebody who was talking about like some of the bus shelters and like how dark they are. Like, are mm -hmm. you still, do you still work with like EMS transit and. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, so, still, I still. And and so, I mean, is there like funding or are there plans to make sure that there's some kind of lighting or lighting options in some of the shelters just because they can be so dark and. Yeah. Some do have it. Um, but you're definitely right that some don't. And, um, sometimes they're just standalone bus stops. You know, I told you there's that light you can press almost like a crosswalk light and it'll blink mm, that's really angled right. at the oncoming bus. It's not really made for the passenger to be okay. well lit. It's more so that the driver can see. I can look into that. I can certainly look into that. Um, and see, I mean, I still currently work for UMass Transit Services and obviously we run for the PBTA. So, right uh, someone's someone's gonna know something so i can definitely yeah no that. and I, it seems like sometimes too there's like funding for that like there's funding mm -hmm. from the state sometimes so like upgrade bus access and some of it has to do with like you know pull-offs and things like that but it also seems mm -hmm. like some of it might be related to lighting i don't know yeah yeah and i honestly i don't even know if pbt has like a little project or anything to work on with respect to upgrading bus stops to the level that you're talking about with you mm -hmm. know bus shelters uh lighted bus shelters and just even just lights around well, the stop. well as you said even the ones that aren't necessarily like shelters but just to have mm -hmm. like some type of illumination as you were saying mm -hmm. just so that at least like the bus driver can see that there's mm -hmm. like passengers waiting and the passengers yeah. might benefit from having a little bit of light you know but but but, yeah. but especially i think in the shelter right if somebody was sitting in a dark shelter mm -hmm like the bus could go by them and not see them unless they come out and and mm -hmm. also a lot of people don't want to sit in the dark in a dark shelter so right no definitely but, um, not yeah anyway but yeah i can look into that as well but, or, or i don't know if some shelters have like solar paneling or something like that where it would make it easy to i don't know i don't believe so no. I think okay. some of those lights, the standalone lights, have a solar panel on top. I don't think they're. Yeah, that's what I meant. I just meant like localized. Solar oh, the little ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think they might have a solar little panel on top. Right. To recharge it during the day. Yeah, and it doesn't even have to be like light. I mean, bright lighting, right? It just is like a little bit of illumination. It's, so, right. It's like it's like yeah. what your iPhone has, like a little LED. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Well, thank um, you. And so do we need to decide on an August meeting? Yeah, that would be great if we can. And I know, I mean, I had been talking um, with Jess from Mass Bike about coming, if that was of interest. And um, sure. So I don't know. I was wondering if we do it around like the 17th or something. Does that work for the four of us who are here? And then I can float yeah, it to the other people. I think people. that does for me. Okay. It's a Thursday, right? Again, yeah, yeah. we try to do I'm them on Thursdays. Okay, right, right. I'm fine with that. Yeah, that works. For okay, me too. great, awesome, great. All right, so um, our meeting is adjourned. Then, yeah, sounds good. Okay, second. Great. Okay, thanks, Guilford. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Bye. Amber. Thank you. She'll listen to the course. All right.
Oh, I I, so, you know, we now have, I have now have a planning board member in my house too. That's right. He doesn't know what he's in for. <laughs> <laughs> he was asked about how he resolves conflicts and they liked that. <laughs> oh, there you go. So, fun, fun. Fun, fun. Well, he can help, you know, he can help with uh, transportation and subdivisions and things. And there you go. Don't worry. And so, and so Joe, does your daughter like meetings? Yay, meetings. Yeah, does she like what? Does she like meetings? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we're about to go to Groff and take a quick trip. So. Nice. I think she's Sweet. more into that. Yeah. Yay, Groff. All right. Bye. Enjoy. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Have a good one.